So there you are, minding your own business when you discover your Proxmox server has a failed disk. Luckily, you were smart enough to run your disks in a mirror, so your data's not been lost, and the server will still be up and running. But since RAID is not a backup, time is now a factor to making sure it stays that way. Today, we're going to simulate a disk failure and show you what steps you should take to get your ZFS mirror back up and running. All right, we've got some actionable items from the board, so listen up. We've been working on collaboratively disseminating creative thinking so we can implement multifunctional customized paradigms to revolutionize our compute processes. Now, I have no idea what any of that means, but we need an answer to them by the end of the day. So, suggestions. Uh, what about Vulture? Well, that depends. Does it include corporate buzzwords? Well, Vulture is the world's largest privately owned cloud provider. Yes, the cloud. I love it. They say the cloud is good for synergistically transforming enterprise-wide core competencies. Well, I don't know about all that, but with Vulture, we can instantly roll out high-performance cloud servers with their one-click deployment tool. They have plans for virtualization or bare metal instances, object storage, even GPU compute for AI-accelerated workloads. Hmm. I like what you're saying, but could you translate it into a language that I understand? With Vulture, we can quickly revolutionize our compelling processes with customized virtualization platforms, increasing ROI through cloud-based resources. All right, well, I think that's lunch. With Vulture, you can skip the corporate talk and get right down to business. With 32 data centers around the world, they'll have an instance near you and your customers, whether you need a single VM or a full global rollout. Visit getvulture.com craft and get a $250 free trial for your first 30 days. Again, that's getvulture.com craft and a huge thanks to Vulture for sponsoring today's video. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. Today, we're going to talk about something that's not often discussed as part three of my Proxmox 8.0 series. What do you do in case of hardware failure? Let's face it, home labbers, and more often than not, a large majority of small and medium sized businesses often have used or inexpensive server gear running all of their operations, which can lead to a higher rate of failures. So what do you do about them when they happen? My current recommendation for running Proxmox is to install it on a ZFS mirror or a ZFS RAID to store both your OS and your storage drives on. Now, this video is also making the assumption that you're going to be using ZFS and not the older LVM for your storage pools. For today's example, we're going to be using the DIY $1,000 home lab server, this guy right over here, that I built a couple of months ago. Inside it are two one terabyte silicon power A60 NVMe SSDs in a ZFS mirror that are responsible for booting the OS as well as hosting all of my VM disk storage. So why are we doing this video right now? Did I use a cheap NVMe drive and now I'm suffering the fruits of my labor? Actually, it's nothing like that. Last week, I needed a one terabyte drive for a PC I was building for my nephew, and Amazon decided to deliver the disk that I needed for that PC two days later than I needed it to do the video shoot. So I did what anyone would do. I ripped the one terabyte NVMe drive out of the server, knowing I could replace it in a couple of days when the new disk came in. Plus, I could film the entire process for all of you to see. Win-win. So let's go ahead and dive into Proxmox and see what exactly a failed drive looks like. And you'll notice right off the bat that one of the shocking things about Proxmox is there's no current drive status anywhere to be found. If we go to the data center tab and click on summary, you can see that this is a view of all of our current servers in this Proxmox cluster. And the server is reporting as online and no errors. In fact, the only error we see on this entire page is in the subscription tab because I don't pay for the Proxmox Enterprise subscription repository. By the way, I will be doing a quick blurb in a future video about how to get rid of that uh, warning and get on the mainline repository with all of the updates that you need. So make sure you're subscribed. Still on that data center tab, if we go down and click on storage, you can see that we do see a ZFS pool is present and usable on this server cluster, but it doesn't show any errors either. Although I know this ZFS pool is degraded. Even further, we can go down and click on our home lab DIY server, which is what I named that server over there. And same thing on the main summary page. There's no explanation or even indication that we might have a problem here. It's only once we go down to disks and then click on ZFS pools, we can see that the health status for this ZFS pool is set as degraded. 
Double clicking on that, it's pretty obvious to see why. We have one NVMe drive online and one NVMe drive reporting as unavailable because, well, it just doesn't exist anymore. This right here is why it's important to set up monitoring systems to both check and report to you about system health. Now I've done a quick tutorial on Observium before here on the channel, but I've not explained Proxmox integration in that. Maybe that'll also be a topic for a future video. So now that we know we have a degraded RAID, there are a couple options to move forward. Just because a RAID is degraded doesn't mean you have a failed disk. And this is especially important if you have a home lab or run a small medium business where you're not gonna have a service plan or necessarily warranties for all of your hardware all the time. One important thing to take a look at is the read, write, and checksum errors, which are all reported both for the entire pool and then per disk down here below. Now, as you can see in my instance, there are zero errors on the entire pool, which means my problem is not that a drive has failed, although in this case it is because the drive is just gone, uh, but because there exists some other issue with RAID integrity. Even as few as two or three read or write errors can cause your RAID to become degraded. That doesn't necessarily mean that a drive had a failure. It just means that a particular read or write operation didn't succeed successfully the first time. If you have just a couple of failures, and usually my over under for a couple failures is double digits. If you have nine or fewer read or write errors, you can probably try to recover that data or at least do a verification and data integrity check on your RAID to make sure that, that everything is in good working order. If you have over 10 errors, it's probably a good time to start looking at physical drive failure as they tend to stack up rather quickly. If you have zero or a very low number of errors, you can check integrity across all of the blocks on those drives by running the command zpool scrub dash v and then the name of your ZFS pool, which in the case of Proxmox is going to be named rpool. This will compare all the parity bits between the storage blocks and determine if the checksums between them are all correct. If the scrub comes back without errors, you can type in zpool clear to clear all the errors and set the status of the zpool as clean again. An indicator that a drive may have failed is its smart status, which you can check on by going to the disks tab under your local server. Now, as you can see, my home lab server does have quite a few disks on it. And if we pay attention right up here to my NVMe drive, you can see that the smart test has passed, which means that according to smart and the hardware monitoring inside the drive, it doesn't think a failure is imminent. In my particular case, I am missing my second NVMe drive entirely, which is a clear indicator that data can no longer be written to it. For the sake of this video, let's pretend I already determined that my particular disk had failed. Now, let's go ahead and replace it. Now, if you have a disk that is failing and it is a hot swappable drive, you can set the status of that disk to offline by typing in zpool offline rpool, which is the name of your pool, and then the disk ID of the disk you would like to remove. If the drive is hot swappable, you can then remove the disk from your server and replace it with a new one. In my case, since we're going to be replacing an NVMe drive, we will need to shut the server down entirely to swap out the disk before we move forward. So let me go ahead and do that right now. All right, so we have the drive replaced, the server is booted up, and now we can get to actually reconfiguring this zpool mirror. So first up, I'm going to type in zpool status one more time because we're gonna need this drive path right here. This is the path of the disk that is no longer present on this server. But long file path aside, replacing the drive is fairly simple. I'm going to type in zpool replace, then the name of my zpool, which is rpool, followed by the disk that I'm going to remove. So that is this very long path right here. We're just going to copy and paste that, followed by the disk ID that we're going to replace it with. And for that, we can use the much simpler path inside of Proxmox that is dev slash NVMe 0N1. So slash dev slash NVMe 0N1. When I hit enter, it should automatically remove the old disk, add the new disk, and then begin a resilvering process that is synchronizing both disks together in a brand new mirror. And to check on that, I can type in zpool status one more time. One thing I love about NVMe drives is just how freakishly fast they are. Uh, Resilvered 13.2 gigabytes in 12 seconds. Zero errors were found. Both drives are now online and our Z pool has been repaired. 
Now obviously spinning disks or any kind of pool with much larger capacities is going to take a much longer time to resilver. But in this case, all I have on here is my Proxmox OS itself, plus the OS VM disks for a couple of other VMs. So it's not very much data at all. Now this process isn't just good for ZFS mirrors. This also works for any type of ZFS disk that uses a parity. So all of your different types of ZFS RAID, like RAID Z2 and the like. It is the exact same process. It is the exact same steps. All you need to do is make sure that you have a drive that is large enough to support your RAID. So in my case, I had a one terabyte NVMe drive. I need to replace that disk with at least a one terabyte NVMe drive. It can be larger, but it can't be smaller. And that's pretty much the basics of it. And it's why I like ZFS so much is the commands are incredibly intuitive. They're very simple. And the entire process is basically seamless. The user experience of replacing a drive in one of these pools, so night and day from the old hardware RAID configurations that I've used in the past. And honestly, software RAID really should be the way of the future. There's no hardware requirement or hardware level acceleration or RAID controlling that's happening that prevents you from migrating this ZFS pool to another system or swapping out parts that aren't necessarily identical matches for what you already have. It's an open architecture, it's an open file system, and it's lightning fast to repair any issues if and when they arise. But like I said, sometimes the first step to solving a problem is knowing that you have a problem at all. And so keeping tabs on your system health and having good monitoring systems in place is paramount if you want to keep your systems problem free. As I mentioned, I have done a tutorial with Observium before, and you can click right up here if you want to see that. I will be updating that for Proxmox integration later on, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that future content. That's gonna do it for me in this one. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Beer for today is from Ex Nova Brewing out of Portland, Oregon, or at least it will be until they move all operations to their New Mexico brewery. Uh, this is the Proper Fence Pilsner Lager with New Zealand hops, clocking in at 4.8%. So I don't drink a lot of Pilsners and Lagers on the channel, and it's not because I don't like them. It's just that cost-wise, I feel like I get more for my money buying a double IPA or an Irish red or you know even a stout or a porter or something like that. It is just as expensive for a craft pilsner as it is for one of those other style beers, especially from a brewery even like Ex Novo. Um, and at 4.8% and being a pilsner, it's not exactly the greatest vessel to give you a lot of different flavor profiles. And unfortunately, that's very much the case here. This is very much a drinkable beer, but I don't think it's all that much better than a Rainier or a 10 barrel pub beer or something like that. It's a very standard Pilsner with very standard malts and it's, it's perfectly drinkable. It's very good. I just don't think it was worth $12 for a four pack, but to each their own. Cheers.